Hello and welcome. This is uh, the Open Wi-Fi Project, uh, the dawn of the free library Wi-Fi chip talk by Sanjin Zhao. So um, Zhao work, um, sorry, Sanjin works on SDR implementation of Wi-Fi uh, uh, wireless networks at ID Lab. Uh, he is also an active uh, free software SDR developer on LTE, BTLE, uh, GPS, ADSP, and Wi-Fi. In this talk, he'll introduce the Open Wi-Fi project, a key piece of the free software and hardware puzzle that aims to enable fully free connectivity. Uh, Sanju, please take it away. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. This is uh, Sanju Jiao. Uh, OK, although I cannot see you, uh, but uh, oh, I will try my best. Uh, I'm now uh, working in ID Lab which is a joint lab between IMAC and Ghent University, Belgium. And I am Chinese. Uh, today I will talk about the Open Wi-Fi project, the dawn of the free liberal Wi-Fi chip. All right. <clears throat> so first I need to answer the essential question. What is the Open Wi-Fi project? Uh, I list some items. <clears throat> it's the free Wi-Fi baseband Cheap design, although currently it's still an IPGA. Uh, currently, it supports 802.11, 8G, and N. But some of you might be familiar with Wi Fi 4, Wi Fi 5, Wi Fi 6. Uh, currently, we support until Wi Fi 4. And uh, our hardware description language source code is available under HGPL v3. And the design currently tested on IPGA against commercial Wi-Fi chip, which means that with our design running on IPGA, we can communicate with the, those commercial Wi-Fi chip, which means those uh, your electronic devices, your home Wi-Fi router. Our design can, is compatible with all this uh, <coughs> standard or commercial Wi-Fi chip. And uh, working progress is Wi-Fi 6 i.e. 802.11ax. And the last row is the GitHub link of our project, but you don't need to remember this long address. You just search Open Wi-Fi on internet. I believe our GitHub address is on the top. <clears throat> Here is a brief timeline of our project. Uh, at the beginning, we uh, did the internal development around uh, two or three years in a uh, European uh, research program. Uh, it's, it's part of the program. We also use the work for the research, for our internal research. And at the end of 2019, uh, we decided to put the project online. And I also pushed a Twitter uh, about the project with a very simple video. <clears throat> and as you can see, <coughs> people, uh, lots of people react. We got lots of attentions and eyes. And you will know why uh, later on. I will explain. <clears throat> and right after that, in the beginning of the, in the February of 2020, we went to the first time uh, in Brussels to give uh, some demo in the stand and uh, give a presentation. Uh, also got lots of eyes attractions. And then uh, you know what happened, right? Uh, the time is, uh... oh, sorry, I quit the full screen. Okay. <clears throat> the first time is in 2020 February. And then in uh, March uh, here, the Europe, the Belgium uh, went to lockdown. So I, I, I tweet another Twitter, time to pack walls and go home. I work in home. Thanks to Corona, we will have a quiet month <laughs> <laughs> for open Wi-Fi development. <clears throat> it turns out not, not a quiet month. It's a quiet year or years. <laughs> we still don't know. Today, here, I think uh, working home or remote working is still mandatory, if possible. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> then I found a very interesting research on the during the pandemic uh, <clears throat> from the from Hofer, uh, 
German Germany. <coughs> they found that uh, this is the 2020 March, right? You see, when the lockdown begins, the internet traffic grows immediately. <coughs> I think that's reasonable. Actually, the lockdown or the uh, work at home convert all the traditional traffic by car, by train, by airplane to internet traffic. Because before the lockdown, people need to uh, take those traffic, train, bus, airplane, to do the conference, but after lockdown, we use internet traffic to do the conferences like we do now, right? <clears throat> so I think that's reasonable. So <clears throat> I believe everyone during the past year, uh, you use Wi-Fi a lot, right? Every day. Ah, uh, okay. Even before the COVID, I also, I also believe you use Wi-Fi every day. There are a lot of Wi-Fi devices around you. Uh, your personal device, your home Wi-Fi router. So today, let's talk about the Wi-Fi chip that handles your daily internet traffic at home or at office. <clears throat> so the the first thing I want to introduce to you is about the Wi-Fi chip itself, <coughs> not about our project, because to, to, to have you a better understanding of, of our project, I need you to understand the Wi-Fi chip itself. The introduction will be a bit uh, technical, but don't worry, I will make it easy for you. So what is a Wi-Fi chip? Wi-Fi chip is the yellow square here <coughs> on my screen. The Wi-Fi chip, there's an antenna, connected to the chip and there's a bus or like the USB or PCIe. Anyhow, there's an electronic connection from the Wi-Fi chip to your operating system or to your computer. Computer could be an embedded computer like Raspberry Pi or your desktop or your laptop. And uh, in your operating system, there should be a Wi-Fi chip driver. <clears throat> Otherwise the operating system cannot recognize your Wi-Fi chip. And above the Wi-Fi chip driver, there's a network stack, right? Like the TCP IP, et cetera, UDP, uh, et cetera. So basically Wi-Fi chip is a block with a antenna and with a connection to your computer. <clears throat> so how the Wi-Fi chip serve your app in your computer? <coughs> like <clears throat> the Google search or Facebook or Twitter, uh, here, the computer could also be your cell phone, your pad, right? Because cell phone, pad, basically they are computer. They are ARM processor-based computer. And how Wi-Fi chip serve your app? Actually, the basic uh, philosophy is also quite simple. Those uh, apps generate the data packet and handle the packet to your uh, network stack. And then operating system put the packet from the network stack to your Wi-Fi driver. driver put the packet to the Wi-Fi chip. After some processing, <clears throat> the packet is turned to a, a signal, wireless signal, and sent out via the antenna. Uh, on the other path, the receive signal goes to the reverse way. Uh, the antenna from antenna to the Wi-Fi chip, after demodulation, after lots of processing, the signal is converted back to the data packet, handled to the Wi-Fi driver, network stack, and finally reach your app. So that's the thing happens thousand, thousand times per second when you are using your computer uh, with uh, those internet app. <clears throat> so now let's go deeper. What are inside? the Wi-Fi chip. Uh, as you can see, okay, I already introduced the, the, the your app operating system. Now let's took close look into the Wi-Fi chip itself. Inside the chip, actually there are two big building block, the baseband and the radio. The baseband basically is a digital part that handle <clears throat> your packet, uh, convert your packet to digital signal or demodulate the digital signal back to packet. And the radio is the analog part. The radio could 
convert the digital signal to a real signal in the air or convert the real signal in the air back to digital by the ADC and DAC. What is ADC? What is DAC? ADC is the analog to digital converter. DAC is the digital to analog converter. So <clears throat> I guess that's quite easy to understand, right? Inside Wi-Fi chip, there's a digital part, analog part, and digital analog converter. So the main processing is inside the baseband or the digital part. The main tasks of this baseband are three. The first one, packet queuing. Because your when 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 you try to send the packet to the air, the packet firstly will be queued in the baseband. Not it won't be sent immediately. Remember, the the air is open. The wireless channel is open. It should be polite before you send something. I will introduce later. That's quite interesting. The second part is the packet signal conversion, right? modulation and demodulation. But if you don't understand modulation, demodulation, that's OK. <clears throat> Basically, it does the packet signal conversion. And the third part, most important part, avoid interference with other nodes. I will go to that in detail. That's about, you should be polite when you send signal in the air. <clears throat> so here uh, I give you a quite example. You will understand uh, very easily. Uh, I, I won't go, in, go into <laughs> this building blocks uh, in very detail. Basically, this building block is the baseband, right? I just mentioned it has three tasks, packet queuing, packet signal conversion, and avoid interference with others. So. Basically, the packet sending like you are talking with your mouse here. And uh, meanwhile, you should also listen to the channel. Who, who else is talking? It's like your ear, right? So there's some module that could listen the channel uh, to make sure you won't interfere other people. So this is the very uh, basic model of how Wi-Fi chip avoid interference with each other in the air. <clears throat> OK, so what is the rule uh, when your Wi-Fi chip or Wi-Fi device do the signal transmission and reception? <coughs> Actually, the rule is very similar to, to this model. Uh, imagine there are lots of people in a very busy room to do some ad hoc discussion between different peoples. Then the room is like the public Wi-Fi channel, as you some of you might know. There are two Wi-Fi bands, right? 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and in the bands there are lots of Wi-Fi channel. And in one channel, the model is quite similar to this: many people doing ad hoc discussion in a in, in a crowded room. OK, so that's <clears throat> because in your home, you have lots of electronic devices. Many of them has Wi-Fi chip. So actually, it's also a real model. In your room, lots of Wi-Fi chip. They need to uh, communicate with each other uh, randomly <clears throat> according to what kind of app you are running on your Wi-Fi nodes, right? So those are basic rules. Listen before talk and fast act to release the channel. What's the fast act? Act means acknowledgement, means that if someone say, say something to you, you should give him acknowledgement immediately to tell him, got it, I understand. Then your this time conversation finished, the other people can use the channel immediately, right? You shouldn't think for a long time. When someone say to something to you, 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 you think for one minute, after one minute, you say, OK, I understand, got it. Then all other people need to wait for your thinking. So you should give a very fast acknowledgment to the other side. Got it? OK, we release the channel. Other people can use it. The third rule, wait for random time after the channel is released or after you are interrupted. What does that mean? Because as I said, right, if you are, if some others uh, are, this, uh, are saying something, when they finish, right, they give acknowledgement, this, this, uh, this conversation finished, 
<clears throat> all the people around will know, okay, these two guys, they finished discussion. Then can I speak now? If all people jump in immediately, right? They will interfere each other. So that's a very smart and simple and effective way. Even the channel is released. Huh? No, silent, silence. No, you, you shouldn't talk immediately. You wait for a random time. And when you are talking, if you are interrupted, that means in the channel, some uh, interference is happening. You should also wait for a random time. You shouldn't retry immediately. That only make things worse. And the next rule is grab the channel by talking. Okay, after you, you're waiting random time, your, your, your random timer is up, you can talk. Now you announce the channel is yours. You are talking. Other people will listen. Remember, listen before talk. <clears throat> if, and, and you can also grab the channel by announcement, by announce your plan via some special packets. Uh, when will that mechanism be used? It will be used when you have a long speech. You won't say a 10 word sentence to the other people. You have lots of words to say. Okay, before your lots of words, you should make announcement. Uh, I will say for next uh, three minutes, now is the speech, blah, 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 blah. Other people will wait silently after you finish your long speech. That's part of the protocol. And you should shut up if uh, other, other one is talking, right? Listen before talk. Or other, or other one announce occupation for next uh, period. During that period, if you hear the announcement, <clears throat> you should keep silent. I believe this rule, how Wi-Fi chip operate, coexist with each other is easy to understand, right? So let me give you some real example, real Wi-Fi chip example. But uh, sh you should be aware that all this information are from uh, internet, um, from the community work by reverse engineering or some data sheet. Uh, <clears throat> here is, is a recent Wi-Fi chip. Uh, it's a BCM4339. Uh, what is inside the chip? Actually, the, the module are quite similar to my introduction. Uh, as you can see, there's an ARM processor in the chip, ARM Cortex processor with ROM, RAM, and below the RAM, per, uh, th this ARM processor handling the packet, packet handling, queuing, etc. And below the ARM, there's a D11 core. The D11 core is another processor that is handling the, those rules I just introduced. <clears throat> And then after that, it's a 802.11 phi physical layer. Uh, this module do the packet signal conversion between do the conversion between signal and packet. And finally, before go to the antenna, there's a radio. Huh? This is a real chip, <clears throat> real Wi-Fi chip in the real world. Uh, so. As you can see, there are processors, right? The ARM processor, D11 processor, and uh, those processors, some program are running. So they are called a uh, blob, uh, firmware. <clears throat> okay, I can tell you for this chip, uh, some people did very great reverse, en reverse engineering work. And uh, because there's, no free uh, firmware for ARM, no free firmware for the D11 core. <clears throat> and the D11 core, if you check the data sheet, well, they have introduced the D11 core in the data sheet because, the, um, because uh, for the Wi-Fi driver, you need to configure some register to, to, um, to configure some behavior of the low level. Anyhow, basically it's a CPU, you just, need to remember that. <clears throat> this is one example. Uh, another very good example is about uh, uh, of the Wi-Fi chip is AR9271. Uh, why I say this is a very good example? Because uh, the vendor, Atheris, has published the free firmware 
for this Wi-Fi chip. As you can see, the architecture is quite similar to the previous one, but unfortunately, this chip has uh, discontinued. It's, it's too old. But inside the chip is quite similar. A CPU, <clears throat> CPU and RAM, the ROM, etc., and Mac processor, which is handling the those rules I introduced, and the file, right, do the packet signal conversion. And the vendor has released the free firmware on the CPU. That, that is very good. <clears throat> so from Linux uh, perspective, you have a free driver, also free firmware. But I have to point out a thing is that this Mac processor, inside the Mac part, there are also lots of processor-like unit, like this uh, DRU, QCU, DCU, PCU, those UEC unit, like the CPU. For this part, also some program is running. Uh, this part, they probably won't uh, run the C program or, or, <clears throat> or some uh, high-level language program. They run the very tiny program. They call it microcode, I think, in most of the uh, Wi-Fi chip uh, data sheet, microcode running on, on this part. But uh, this microcode, microprogram, uh, there isn't a free version, or you, you can't find the source code. <clears throat> so, as I said, the community has did lots of uh, work on the Wi-Fi chip, right? Uh, the, for instance, in those uh, hardware projects of free hardware uh, boards, um, they are still using the commercial off-the-shelf Wi-Fi chip like uh, those very recent BL602, ESP32, ESP uh, Wi-Fi module, Arduino, Raspberry Pi, OpenWRT, the Pine uh, computer or Pine device, and also RISC-V version of Raspberry Pi like Pico Rio, Pico V, etc. <coughs> All these very hot hardware projects are using uh, commercial off-the-shelf Wi-Fi chip and uh, I, I, most of the chip running the non-free firmware and non-free uh, microcode, microprogram. Uh, lots of reverse engineering is done for the firmware. If people try to develop the driver, people need to understand the firmware, the behavior of the chip. And it, there's a wiki uh, uh, that does the comparison of open source Wi-Fi driver. You can see most of the vendors offer source code of the driver. Yeah, that's reasonable because driver is part of the Linux kernel. It has to have the source code. And uh, no vendor offer source code of the firmware, except that chip AR9271 from Arthurus. And no vendor offers source code of the low-level program. Uh, like I mentioned in the D11 call or the Mac processor, of the Wi-Fi chip, <clears throat> that part handle the very time critical, those uh, polite rules to make sure the Wi-Fi nodes can talk with each other. Uh, I, I, so far, I, I don't see any uh, vendor offer source code of that part. And uh, okay, uh, another interesting thing about Wi-Fi chip is about uh, sensing. Uh, actually. The Wi-Fi chip uh, not only can do communication tasks for you, uh, because in the air, full of the Wi-Fi signal, uh, actually, there are already lots of work that use those Wi-Fi signal to do sensing, like sense the human gesture or sense the ob object around. The very early uh, work you could find is like the seeing through wall from uh, MIT Media Lab. and uh, to use Wi-Fi signal for sensing, a standard is also ongoing. Standardization is also ongoing. It's 802.11bf part. Uh, this sensing, <clears throat> you don't, they don't need you to cooperate with the sensing because Wi-Fi signal is everywhere. They only need to collect those signal, right, from the air. Then you can sense people or object around. 
you can find lots of technology over there together with the machine learning or AI. So Wi-Fi signal, uh, besides carrying your net internet traffic, the signal could also be used for detecting things around. It could be used for safety reason. It could also bring some privacy concern. Okay, let's do a quick recap the wi -Fi, about Wi-Fi chip. The chip is small, cheap, yet complicated. How cheap a Wi-Fi chip is, it's good. The, the, I think you can buy a Wi-Fi chip with half a dollar. The, the real cost, I think, is around uh, two or, uh, uh, point 0.2 or point 0.3 dollar. And the program, firmware, microcode uh, is involved heavily in the chip. So this part, in my opinion, they are also software. The chip and program inside are non-free. And uh, some types of the packet is generated on chip, like the acknowledgement, like the announcement <coughs> I introduced before. Those are not generated by your app or by operating system. They generate by chip itself. So the chip could generate extra packet to the purpose is to maintain the, the, the networking, the wireless public wireless networking operation without creating lots of interference. And the chip can see or sense the object around. It's a very hot topic right now. And people are so used to the commercial off the shelf Wi-Fi chip. Live with what is offered, black box chip uh, and a free driver. Yeah, most of chip has the open source free driver. And reverse engineering, if people want to do more on the chip, or if people want to know more about the chip, people do the reverse engineering. That's the situation right now. Uh, then jump to our project. Uh, actually, I have to say, we are not aware all of the above Wi-Fi chip stuff before 2020, because before 2020, we are busy with our Open Wi-Fi project. But after our project is online, and many, many uh, information and people comes to us and uh, we realize then we start to see the commercial Wi-Fi chip ecosystem, uh, what uh, community has <clears throat> done. And we realized that all the above situation, but before 2020, we didn't realize. But why, why do we do the open Wi-Fi? The initial reason is needed by our own research activity. And we also feel it's very useful for the broad research community, like other university or research institute. For instance, the researchers could implement innovative idea at the driver level and above. But when the idea comes to the chip level, it becomes impossible or very difficult. Reverse engineering needs luck. And students learn Wi-Fi knowledge in classroom, right, in the wireless network or in the communication technology lessons, but they never see the devil in the details, the design inside a Wi-Fi chip, because no free design available for there to watch, for there to, to see, to learn. And access the commercial Wi-Fi chip design, source code is very expensive with many limitations, NDA, license, etc. So that's the initial reason why we do the open Wi-Fi project. Uh, because we feel we have enough expertise and knowledge to develop a Wi-Fi chip. So we decide <clears throat> to go for it directly instead of reverse, en reverse engineering. Th those are two, two roads. I think both roads are, are okay, but we choose the, the, the forward one, direct one. We design our own Wi-Fi chip, and then we know <clears throat> how Wi-Fi works. So after realizing the situation of the non-openness around the commercial Wi-Fi chip, we believe that now the open Wi-Fi project could mean more. Because open Wi-Fi is the first free HGPL v3 chip design 20 years after 802.11 was released around 2000. As you can see, in, this page is from Wiki around 
around one nine 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 or two thousand. The, the eleven B A very fir, very very first uh, Wi Fi standard was released. Now it's twenty years later. The eleven B eleven A they are still being used, <clears throat> but Open Wi Fi is the first free design. Twenty years after. Open Wi-Fi, we have achieved uh, a lot achievement and impact. For instance, uh, we have monitored lots of users on the uh, internet by the GitHub, lots of university and research institutes all over the world, in US, in um, Asia, Europe. And uh, we also did a good job on the GitHub regarding the stars, forks, uh, watch, etc. You can check by yourself. After all, we are the, the, the first free design. Before us, to access a Wi-Fi free design is very expensive or very difficult. So the project initially found by the European Horizon 2020 ORCA project, as I said, our internal development at the beginning. And we also got uh, uh, 50K euro, euro from Net Foundation for the Wi-Fi 4 feature which was uh, released already in the uh, FOSTEM 2021. Yeah, we go to FOSTEM and uh, you can also find lots of discussion on the internet about the Open Wi-Fi project. <clears throat> so one interesting thing, well, when, when you have open and free design, some amazing work, some inno more, inno more amazing, more innovative work could happen. Here is an example. As I said before, the Wi-Fi signal can be used to sense the people or object around, right? The basic uh, principle is that uh, by collecting Wi-Fi signal, uh, they can do the channel estimation, channel between the transmitter and the receiver. Receiver is non-cooperative receiver. Anyone can receive Wi-Fi signal. After receive Wi-Fi signal, they can estimate the channel between transmitter. The transmitter could be your device, could be your home router. The channel between transmitter and receiver. By estimating the channel, they can make a guess on the object of people in between. So in this work, the CSI murder, this is from uh, open Wi-Fi users, external users, not from us. They developed a technology uh, that could anti-sense. <laughs> The basic principle is also uh, simple. As we own the design, right? The, the, it's a free design, so we can change the design. We can add the fake or random channel before the signal leaves the transmitter. Then at the receiver, you see, a, fake, you see a, a real channel plus fake channel. So all your sensing algorithm will not work anymore. Then user could take control. Uh, if the user want the sensing work, well, we can turn off this uh, random or fake channel generation in, in my Wi-Fi device. If I don't want other people to do sensing around me, I can turn it on. So that's a very good, interesting, inspired by the open Wi-Fi, open and free design. Okay. <clears throat> uh, okay, we are approaching the end. Use Open Wi-Fi as your home AP. It's quite simple. Three steps. The first step, you bought you you buy an IPJ board. It's not from us. It's off the shelf IPJ development boards, and download the Open Open Wi-Fi image to SD card. Insert the SD card to your IPJ boards, and connect Ethernet cable. From your IPJ boards to your home router, to your to your to your home uh, broadband router from your operator, right? Then because the router is connected to the internet via ADSL or fiber, and power on, then you will see a SSID called Open Wi-Fi from this uh, IPJ AP, uh, because currently we don't have real cheap it's IPJ. Now you you have Open Wi-Fi AP in your home. You can use it every day. What's next? 
uh, from our project. We have some thoughts and we, we also would like to discuss with many, many of you. The IPJ board is flexible. We can still improve or fix the design, but IPJ board is very expensive from 800 to 3000. It's much expensive than the very advanced Wi-Fi AP already. And lower the price to the same level as other commercial Wi-Fi chip by taping up a real Wi-Fi chip. We are thinking about that, but we need to solve some issue before. We need to think something more clearly. For instance, uh, well, we need the funding, right? To turn the IPJ into a chip. And the chip game is actually a game of volume. Go, no go decision is depends on the volume, how big the volume we can achieve with the free Wi-Fi chip. Uh, if we tape out the chip, the very unique point of the chip will be that it, it's a free silicon and a free firmware. Is it unique enough to achieve a volume to make the chip profit profitable? To achieve the volume, I guess we need to be adopted by some very popular free software hardware project. Here, we definitely need your idea opinion. For instance, if some Raspberry Pi, some free Raspberry Pi or some very popular project, hardware project could adopt a real open Wi-Fi chip uh, by collaboration, I think we can more or less partially solve the volume question. The, the most challenging question is the volume of the chip. So that's the end of my presentation. The dawn of the free liberal Wi-Fi chip does the world need a free Wi-Fi chip? Can we afford it? I mean, for the volume. Okay, questions? Thank you very much, Sanchun, for the talk. Um, it's great. Uh, we yeah. do have a couple of questions from IRC. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, which I'll read, uh, read back to you. So first, we have two questions by GNU2, who asks, um, yeah, open Wi-Fi is AGPL v3. Uh, what does it mean in practice? What constitutes a service? Um, does the non-free PDK libraries count as system libraries? Uh, the non-free PDK. <clears throat> I guess the PDK means the physical design kit of those uh, chip foundry. Uh, we haven't uh, thought that far because currently we are still uh, working in the IPGA domain. Uh, even in IPGA, I think uh, some of the module are, are not free because from web IPGA vendor from the third part, because like the software, the, the hardware design also has many, many building blocks. The, the licensing condition of all the components are complicated. We need to solve them uh, step by step. Right. Um, yeah, there's another question. Does open Wi-Fi have non-free dependencies such as, um, you know, a Xilinx tool chain or non-free Xilinx HDL blocks? <clears throat> I think so. I think so. Uh, from Xilinx, from analog device, uh, because the, 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 this uh, digital design domain is I think only recent years has rise uh, a lot regarding the free and open source activity, not like the software move has started many, many years ago, started by the RMS. RMS. Um, we are also just started. So we need to do things right. step by step. Currently, we make sure the core part, the Wi-Fi logic part developed by us is released on there the AGPL v3. That's the part we can control. But definitely when we have energy and uh, more resources, we will try to make the dependent uh, part, non-free part, uh, take some action there. Thank you, makes sense. Um, oh, and just to be clear for the people watching, um, my name is Amina Bandeli and my nick on IRC is Bandeli. So if you join the the LibrePanet underscore room underscore Neptune room, you can ask questions and tag my Nick, and then I will see the questions and ask them here. Um, okay, so we have another question by Alyssa, who asks, what are the legal issues around using Wi-Fi 
on FPGAs with respect to radio regulations like the FCCs? Uh, mm, okay, currently <coughs> it's the situation is like this. Uh, for the regulation part, uh, the 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 user of the IPGA board should uh, should take the responsibility. For instance, uh, during your uh, okay, maybe there's a mis mis misleading part. I think in one of my my slides, use the Open Wi-Fi AP at home. Uh, yes, st strictly speaking, you cannot do that right now because we haven't got the certification from the Wi-Fi Alliance and the regulation uh, department of the government. Uh, but so so now most of our activity, we do the cabling yeah, between our IPG board and the commercial uh, Wi-Fi chip and the test equipment to test our design. Yeah. So in principle, you shouldn't go to the air. That's true. Yeah, I, I, I thank you for the question. I have to remind all the people. Yeah, but that's the software defined radio uh, research going on. Not only our Wi Fi design, actually, those hardware, software defined radio hardware are from selling analog device. Lots of researchers did lots of other uh, signal uh, related research based on the software defined radio platform. The platform are not ma manufactured by us. Open Wi Fi is yet another design running on the commercial platform. The special thing of the design is that it's the first free uh, Wi-Fi design. This year we have bought the very, pro pro very professional Wi-Fi tester and uh, we will do all the conformance uh, tests re regard regards the regulation. Awesome. Yeah, and that helps uh, in part answer a question that someone else, uh, Noisy Toot, had asked about how ready is open Wi-Fi to use. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, let's see. Um, so uh, we have J-R-O-O-T-A-B-G-A, -A, sorry, I can't pronounce the name, um, and who ask, uh, since there's all this secret microcode, does that make the firmware significantly less useful, you think? <coughs> I think uh, we, we do uh, see a trend, uh, especially in the Wi-Fi 6 area, Lots of uh, vendors, they tend to put more and more functionality in the chip instead of in the driver and in the kernel. And uh, below the firmware, there's a microcode. But firmware also play an important role, definitely. If some vendor could open the firmware, that's always very welcome and uh, always a, a big step. But below the firmware, there's a microcode. So far, I don't see any uh, action there. But firmware definitely play an important role because it's in between driver and microcode. Gotcha. I think we have time for one or two more questions. I'll ask them quickly. Um, let's see. So people are asking, um, multiple people have asked, do you know what kind of volume would be required to get the per unit cost of a free chip down to, let's say, $10 or within a reasonable uh, amount? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, we did lots of work on that. <laughs> I, I I think at least it should be uh, around uh, at least 100K or 1000K, like million level, because that's the volume game. Uh, if we cannot achieve that volume, the, the chip could be quite expensive. Uh, makes things worse because it's chicken and an egg. If if you achieve a certain volume, the NRE, the re research, the the resource put before the tape out could be uh, averaged uh, to a very low level. So Understood. Yes, but if if someone from the chip industry could give us some guide or calculation on that, that's we will very uh, appreciate. Understood. Thank you. Um, I think that's unfortunately all the time we're going to have for questions on stream. But uh, Xianjun, if you're uh, available on freenode.irc, um, you would very much appreciate it if you would take up the, the remaining questions on IRC. On sure, you can find me by IRC, JXJ. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice.
uh, we are we are not online right now oh. okay <laughs> Our Wi-Fi chip, I have to, have have to say, it's uh, currently it's still a very simple Wi-Fi chip. Uh, for the very complicated Wi-Fi chip, uh, if you want that advanced uh, uh, functionality, and uh, you should go for the very advanced Wi-Fi chip, not from us. Our, our Wi-Fi chip, as you can see, is still in the Wi-Fi four level. We are targeting Wi-Fi six, but even Wi-Fi six, there are lots of lots of options. We need to start from the very basic option. So if you are, you can live with Wi-Fi 4 or 6 with very basic option. Uh, I think you don't need reverse engineering anymore if you use our design. But if you need very advanced uh, functionality and uh, they are not open, so reverse engineering definitely also make big sense. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Talk to you later.